Hello everyone. Um, I'm ho I hope you're having a good time with DEFCON so far. Uh, I'm Lucia and I'm the second session chair for this room. And I would like to introduce you to the next talk, which is what is the new in modularity by Martin Chure. Please uh, enjoy this talk and welcome Martin. So, welcome and hello uh, to my talk, What is New in Modularity? I'm Martin, and I will be talking about what's happened in modularity space in the last year. So, before we start, um, I want to introduce the team, uh, which is basically working on modularity in Red Hat. It's me, uh, who is the he, who is the, the software uh, developer and uh, product owner of uh, Modularity. Uh, um, then we have Peter Pisash, uh, who joined our team uh, last year in April. Uh, before that, he was the maintainer of Perl. And he had uh, a lot of, uh, um, he had a lot of uh, experience with modules uh, before that. And now he's the maintainer of LibModuleMD. Uh, next is Philip. Uh, Philip is uh, um, a software engineer in modularity. He works mo mostly on uh, infrastructure related things. And uh, he, before uh, modularity, he worked in Factory 2.0, which is a Red Hat team, which uh, created um, uh, microservices in the infrastructure for building modules, containers, and so on. Yeah, and uh, with this, I will. I want to also uh, thank not only. Uh, I want to thank all the people who are involved in modularity, and uh, whom uh, enabled us to do the things that we did, uh, and we we are very grateful for that. So uh, let's let's get into it. So. Yeah, just like a disclaimer, uh, this will be not very uh, newbie friendly. <laughs> uh, basically, I assume that you know what the module is and how modularity works and so on. So yeah, so let's let's get to it. So uh, in the last year, we uh, uh, created uh, a new version of the module MD packager format. And this was due that we needed to fix an issue, or basically a design issue in modularity, uh, which was uh, the broken up uh, upgrade path problem. Uh, I can like make a small intro into this uh, uh, to segue to the next slide where I can uh, tell you or explain what this means. So basically, this is a simple example. Uh, of course, uh, the upgrade path problem uh, has many variations and it can be not only this, but also more complicated. But just to illustrate the point, I, I uh, make the most um, uh, simple example I could. <laughs> so basically, uh, here, as you can see, uh, we have uh, three columns. The first two columns uh, represent uh, uh, the, the, whole, uh, the whole table represents a, a stream, uh, a module, sorry, a module. Each column represents a stream. Uh, in each field in uh, the tables, uh, uh, as you can see, we have Perl 524, uh, 001, uh, 068, uh, A8. And this is and this represents uh, basically an uh, upgrade path. If you go up from the bottom to the up, you can see there is uh, the versions are 001, 002, 003. Th this represents an upgrade path. Uh, the first stream, which is the 524, is OK. It works. Uh, there is no problem. Uh, because uh, nothing is basically changed, only the version. And the version de de defines the uh, latest uh, upgrade, which should be uh, used when DNF makes its transactions. So this is fine. In the next column, we have uh, Perl 526, uh, the stream 526, which uh, basically is OK until the version uh, 002. But in the version 003, uh, in the third column, you can see the uh, context changed. In the, in the uh, old way, how modularity works is that every time you change your 
uh, modular dependencies, uh, your um, context is generated by MBS, which builds modules. This is a problem because actually, if you change that context, uh, DNF when doing doing its transactions has a real time, a real hard time to uh, identify which is the next uh, uh, upgrade for for your uh, stream. So as you can see, five twenty six is zero uh, zero one is fine. Five twenty six zero 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 two is also fine. But when uh, DNF uh, wants to identify the next upgrade for for DNF, the zero zero three version is is a different a stream with a different context. So it, it it cannot put those two together. So you basically, basically uh, DNF couldn't identify which to upgrade next and uh, upgraded the um, uh, your stream wrongly or it didn't update at, at all because it could put together those two uh, contexts. So uh, basically what we did, one thing why uh, the um, context is generated is due to uh, something which is called uh, module stream expansion. Module stream expansions uh, basically is an automatic way how um, it will create uh, um, modular uh, dependency combinations for you. You don't have to spell which the uh, modular dependencies you need in your uh, stream. You just leave it uh, empty, and the modular dependency uh, stream expansion, uh, modular stream expansion will do it for you. So, and that's why every time those dependencies changed, also the context changed, and the context uh, the context was dynamic. The context changed at real time, so the packager didn't have any control over it. So what we did, basically, we replaced the whole uh, context generation with a static context. A sc static context basically is a configuration for that specific context. The context is defined by the uh, packager uh, before uh, it goes to the uh, MBS to build uh, the module stream. So basically, you have to specify the uh, name of the context, which is a, a arbitrary string. It has some uh, restrictions, but uh, about those you can read in the specifications of this uh, format. So yeah, so it's an arbitrary string which uh, is defined by the uh, packager. This string should be uh, the same for the lifetime of this context, of the module string context, uh, because if you change it uh, for uh, the DNF, it will again be the same thing as with, with the old way how we do things, and uh, there will be a broken update. So, uh, or not a broken update, it will. Uh, Think of, of it as a new new uh, combination of module stream context. So yeah, context uh, is now uh, uh, set by the packager. Uh, yeah, what? Yes. So uh, why we did a new version of module MD packager? Uh, it was because the changes are not uh, backward co compatible. So we needed bump bump up the version. Also, what what uh, prof proliferates with this um, change is that. Uh, now you have like different um, uh, metadata for input and different uh, uh, metadata for output. Because the module MD packager, I will explain, the module, uh, module MD packager version uh, 3 is uh, basically uh, affects only the input file. In the input file, you specify uh, the configurations you need for each, each context to that your um, modules can be built. And the output, which comes uh, in the repository, in the uh, RPM repository, in the repo data, uh, there are still version two uh, module empty uh, uh, metadata. Uh, before uh, before this, uh, basically, you could uh, put uh, module MD v2 at, uh, at input and then get module MD v2 at output. Now you, you put module MD v3 and you get v2. So yeah, the v2 uh, uh, basically didn't change a lot. The only um, addition is that uh, module v2 now has a field which is uh, set, uh, which is called static context, and it just set to true. So ID, uh, DNF can identify that this is actually the context is not generated and it's it's uh, a static context. 
Yeah, so let me check if I didn't forget anything. Yeah, so this wasn't really easy to do as modularity is really uh, implemented in a lot of uh, systems in a pipeline. So it took a long time to be, uh, actually implement uh, into the pipeline. So it took um, nine years, nine years, nine months. Uh, I mean, uh, the mostly uh, the, the most problem uh, was that uh, we didn't <laughs> had a lot of people to to uh, do it. And uh, additionally, uh, we need to check if everything works as expected because this was like a big change. Yeah. So let's let's continue. Yes, this is the upgrade path, for example. Uh, yeah, so additional thing, what we, we added to modularity, one of the features which was missing at the start was removing patch packages from modules, basically, uh, or we call it uh, the modularization. Uh, and but just don't be confused. The modularization we don't mean like like uh, uh, removing like modules, but just removing the modular RPMs from a module. So basically, uh, yeah, so demodularization of packages. Right now we have like a demodularization section uh, in the metadata where you can basically put uh, the uh, um, RPMs that you don't want to be provided by your module, but you want to use the non-modular counterparts. Yeah, so this uh, issue uh, was, yeah, so this, I think this is all this, there is not, not much to said. Uh, this is already um, uh, released in, in Fedora and also in RHEL. Uh, yeah, but this, this uh, for, for Fedora, is, it is released now, but uh, in RHEL it's only for RHEL 9, which will still, is still uh, not released, so yeah. Okay, uh, yes, so modular absolutes. This feature was a long time in in limbo or in development that we can sell. You can say uh, basically the implementation of um, support for uh, obsolete and end of life metadata uh, in um, Fedora uh, or not in Fedora, but in the tools uh, which are using it, which is which are DNF or KRIPOC and others. Uh, was implemented, uh, I would say, uh, quite a long time ago. But again, the, the problem was to implement it into the pipeline itself. Uh, so this is, uh, we have, all of the uh, implementation of this feature is uh, the work on it, the development work is done. Right now, we are actually, uh, it was uh, done like two weeks ago, <laughs> the last uh, page that we needed. And now we are basically testing it. Uh, so we are also have a real life data for Perl, uh, for obsoletes, and we are testing. So basically what obsoletes are, if, if someone doesn't know, uh, this is this feature was missing for modularity also. And this is basically that you could uh, tell uh, if you will add metadata into uh, uh, the uh, meta, uh, distribution or the repository, RPM repository, which will tell which um, you know, module streams uh, can obsolete which ones or uh, when an obsolete is end of life. So uh, this is basically like this. Uh, how, uh, in the end, how we uh, want, uh, how we um, did the, like the user, not user interface, but how you can add your, um, obsolete metadata to Fedora or to other uh, distribution is, is through, um, is similar as default streams. Um, you will just add uh, metadata to a Git repository. This, the link is in the presentation and you then, uh, it will be taken into the repo data, uh, basically on the, um, uh, during compose time. And then, yeah, so yeah, this is this. Uh, yeah, the, the, the specifications are here. They, they are uh, bundled together with module MD, so you can check them after this. Yeah, so uh, the last thing, which was also a highly requested feature, which modularity lacked, uh, is basically building modules locally. Uh, I know that we have, um, you know, uh, um, how to say, it? We have uh, a way to build modules locally, but it's through MBS. And this means that you basically need to know how MBS works. And MBS is a service. It's not a very easy 
um, system to understand if you don't know all the concepts of modularity basically and also um, lib module uh, lib module uh, mbs builds modules in a way that it builds them in the pipeline which basically has some quirks and hacks which i would say uh, are not really the best thing you can have so yeah basically uh we wrote a tool which is called module build uh this tool is quite fresh it was like the first like like a proof of concept version was created in in last year in november so yeah this is still new uh the the benefits of this tool right now are that it's uh, uh it has minimum uh um uh in um uh, it has minimum uh, dependencies uh, for installation because before because when you install MBS you had uh, dependencies on Flask and on other things that you basically didn't need for building uh, modules. So basically, this uh, the only dependencies that this have is to uh, is lib module and mock and then uh, create repo C. And there are like two small libraries uh, of Python uh, which enable the Py objects. Uh, by GA objects. So, yeah, this is the the, the one other benefit of the uh, local uh, building tool is uh, that it doesn't uh, needs the quirks or the hex that uh, basically MBS needs, and those are module build macros, which basically uh, uh, exists because Koji doesn't know how to work with modular uh, repositories. So uh, module build macros basically has all the informations to filter out all the not necessary rpms from your build route this is not needed in uh, in the um, module build tool uh, also uh, basically uh, virtual module streams uh, for example platform uh, is not needed when you are building locally because basically you as the packager are providing the environment and you are also providing the mock config for, for which you are want to build your module uh, closer to traditional way of building rpms uh, yes this is one thing is that um, basically right now you need mbs to uh, have like the information about which uh, package should be built uh, first uh, which uh, uh, arranges the packages in some built batches, which then are like uh, forwarded to um, Koji as a, as a normal builds, because Koji doesn't really understand how modules work internally and how how they should be built. So this tool, basically, what it does, it can do um, arrangement into build batches. And then when you have all the build batches arranged, when it's building, it then used one build batch as a modular dependency to another batch. Hello, just to remind you that you have two minutes. To... OK, then. Uh, so I will split this up. So uh, please, uh, this is a new tool. Uh, it needs a lot of testing, a lot of love. So I'm still working on this. Uh, I have the, the package uh, already for Fedora. Uh, I, I have it in Fedora um, review. So I hope I will be able to uh, release it uh, in Fedora for installation uh, next or ne in the next two weeks. And yes, and I think this is all. Yes, and the, the, the module build tool only works with the new module and the packager with free uh, metadata. Yeah, and I think that's all. Yeah, cool. So that was quick. <laughs> quick ending. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. It was really interesting. Um, please, if you have any questions, uh, head to the Q&A tab and uh, ask there. Martin will also be presented in our virtual uh, virtual event. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yes. Uh, after it's called uh, Work Adventure. Yep. After this meeting, I will be staying uh, outside of this room because there are like virtual rooms, like room four. So I will be staying outside of it. And if anyone wants to talk, just come and we can have yep. a chat. The link is already in the chat. Please go ahead and look at it. It's it's wonderful. I just been there. Did it's like uh, uh, you know if you have been um, in offline DevConf, the it's it's like the old venue. It's looking so cool. Just go ahead and talk to your favorite people. And we have already one question. 
for you. So uh, from Zbigniew, are there any plans for new modules in Fedora? Yeah, so uh, basically, no. Uh, if uh, someone is interested in this technology and want to try it, you can, but there is no mandate that you have to or whatever. Like. Okay, thank you for the answer. If you want to like talk more, Zbigniew, just go uh, to the virtual venue. And uh, yeah, there's another question. Okay, from Jens. Uh, previously, it was quite straining to maintain large packages under modularity. Will that became easier? For example, the building system was not very predictable and sometimes modules were fragile. Yes, so uh, the, basically I can speak a little uh, bit about the plans for the future. Uh, one of the, the next biggest problems we have, and this is like, like not only like a problem with that you, you know, like you have problems, like small problems when you are packaging something or the problems are that the, the, um, the pipeline, the build pipeline is basically not up to the standard as it should be, because as I said, I, I mentioned that basically Koji doesn't know about modules. It's just like a little hack that you put the builds there. So what we are trying to uh, do next this year is to uh, make Koji aware of, of um, modular repositories uh, and also uh, so we can directly build modules in uh, Koji. But this is still in like planning phase. This is not something that we already have. So yeah, I hope this will um, make the uh, packager and uh, user experience better. That sounds cool. Hopefully everything will go well. And we don't have any other questions. So thank you very much, Martin, for your talk. And please uh, look at the work adventure and meet with Martin there if you have any other questions. And um, I will see you in the next session. And have a nice day. See you. You everyone. too. Bye.